गुड इवनिंग सर अंकिता मैम नाउ यू कैन स्टार्ट बिकॉज़ यस फोर पीएम यस सर यस मैम गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर ओके वी कैन नॉट ऑलवेज बिल्ड फ्यूचर फॉर आवर यूथ बट वी कैन बिल्ड आवर यूथ फॉर द फ्यूचर गुड इवनिंग टू वन एंड ऑल प्रेजेंट हियर आई Ankita Sharma is here for online training sessions and my topic for today's session is developing resilience in students so let's get started i hope my voice is audible to everyone everyone yes ma'am okay okay sir so let us have an overview of today's session in this session uh, today we are going to understand what resilience is the concept of resiliency five levels of resiliency explore characteristics of resilient people and how to build resilience in students so before i begin uh, i request uh, all the teachers to kindly just post it in the group and tell me what is that one quality that makes you successful in life you can use your chat box to answer the questions what is that one quality which makes us successful in life any quality that is uh, obviously successful people have lot of traits so what is that trait according to you which is very important perseverance thank you manali ma'am any other teacher any other responses teachers on st thank you arvin sir i just got two responses teachers i want more responses discipline thank you teacher hard work thank you sir responsible thank you so much teachers 
so yes all these qualities are important in life but you know what which is that one quality which differentiates between a successful person and an unsuccessful person this is resilience which is the topic for today's session uh there there is a picture on the screen which you see teachers i these are pottery designs i want you to tell me how these are looking are these looking good bad whatever you like it or you do not like it please mention it in the chat box you like it or you do not like it these are some pottery designs these are relevant to this uh, topic today i will tell you later on but i want a quest i want to get an answer that whether you like the pottery or not no we don't like it okay neha teacher it's one's choice yes it's unique okay so one may like it or one may not like it is it's one's choice but when i found this pottery design i found that oh, it's looking good and you know what teachers what these are these are japanese art when i was doing the research work on this topic i found out a very interesting art which is a japanese art known as kintsugi it is an art form with joints uh, which uh, is which means joined with gold it is very relevant to the idea of resilience so what happens in this art form is that when the pottery is in japan is broken into pieces they glue it together using the gold powder it adds the richness and the beauty of the pottery design i want you to look again and see how these a designs and these uh, white potteries and in this it looks good maybe maybe some teachers won't like it it's one's choice but i think it looks good now so this is very relevant to our topic today uh in life we encounter a lot of problems we encounter hardships in life we have to face adversities in life this is a fact of life we all have to face the challenges in life what we do is we have to collect those broken pieces and we have to fight back this is what resilience is so the definition of resilience is that it is a capacity to persist adapt or transform in the face of change in a way that maintains the basic identity of a system and since we are looking at social ecological resilience we are interested in really enabling long term human survival so it's very true that for human survival we we have to survive and for that we have to be resilient we have to sustain in life and we have to forget all our worries and all our problems and we have to overcome that this is what resilience is uh, i just want you to go back to your childhood memories teachers uh, many of we as a child everybody i think has enjoyed their childhood right and we have played a lot of games so how many of you remember that uh, there was a game hit me not how many of you remember that game hit me not have you ever played or maybe gifted somebody hit me not game children uh, sorry uh, Uh, teachers you can uh, use your chat box to answer the questions hit me not game oh yes odita uh, you yes with the ball i guess yeah right yes 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 we all have played this game right so what happens in hit me not you punch it right so it it comes back again it reverses back and it it comes back to its own position if you if you punch it back again but you know very hard it again comes back right you pick it up and just throw it somewhere it again comes back resilience is exactly what we are looking for as a person we have to bounce back from the adversities of life and from the hardships of life this is what resilience is so let us understand the psychological uh, meaning of resilience it is the ability to mentally or emotionally cope with the crisis or return to pre crisis status quickly so we have to face crisis it's fact of life we will face crisis but what we can do what is in our hands it is that we have to quickly come back to the pre crisis status we cannot uh, we cannot foresee our future what happens in future we might not know but what we can do is we can prepare ourselves for that right now uh to make the children resilient it is very important for us to know whether we are resilient or not for that i want you to uh, 
see uh, i am just sharing one link to you uh, i want you to please uh, go through the link and find out whether you are resilient or not in this there are 16 questions given and you can answer whether you know you are confident in doing what you do or not in the set of questions like uh, when given a task you in, uh, you are you confident enough to uh, to be succeeded then when one attempt fails i learn from it and change my approach and i want you to be honest to yourselves and answer the questions you just give me one minute so that i can uh, i can share the link with you okay i am sharing the link here oh so sorry it is not being done i'm just sharing using my phone i'm just using it using my phone sorry for the interruptions uh, you can go through this link teachers and you can uh, find out whether you are resilient enough or not it is very important for us to be resilient there is some technical glitches i am okay yes so in this you can answer and you will get your scores i want you to just go through this and write your scores in the chat box how much score are you getting so i found that i was 52% was my weightage so i want you also to be honest to yourself and find out whether you are resilient or not uh, meanwhile you are answering i will go to the next slide uh, which is levels of resiliency what are the levels there are five levels of resiliency serendipity counterbalance strong inner selves solution focused and well being now let us understand it closely now level 1 is maintaining your emotional stability health and well being health is very impo important we all we always talk about physical health but mental health is also very 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 important so we mean, we need to regulate our emotions uh, so we have to be stable Uh, uh our health is important well being is important so we need to take care of our health self care education behavior is also uh, very important and then stress management establishing caring relationships now the next one is focus outward good problem solving skills uh, a, a resilient person has to have uh, the skill good problem solving skills uh, conflict resolution this happens with most of the teachers the students come up with their problems uh, it is a student teacher relationship or uh, we uh, we can solve our teacher uh, students problem but i think as a uh, to to make the children resilient we should ask the children whether you did it right or not or what should be done so for that the children should have a good communication skills interpersonal communication tips should be given study skills and time management all are a part where the children can learn how to solve the problems level 3 is focus inward strong inner selves so in that self esteem body image depression mental health topic selecting positive friends and companions positive role models these all are important uh, sometimes it happens that children are not having that self esteem the body language shows that and uh, no, what we can do as a teacher we can help them to overcome their problems uh, and we need to tell them that oh i believe in you just just teachers two words matter a lot to the, uh, to the students right uh, we often talk about depression uh, even uh, a lot of people famous personalities they also face depression uh, they face adversities and they face they are depressed 
but what they do in life like i i would take an example of dipika padukone she had to uh, she was depressed for a very long time 66 kushbu teacher thank you so much uh, then uh, 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 this girl alia bhat sister shaheen bhat she was also uh, depressed for a very long time but these famous personalities they had the strong inner selves to revert back their depression and they came forward and they talked about it so that people those who are depressed they also talk about it so for that i think we need to develop our strong inner selves that is very important for us now the next fourth level is well developed resiliency skills so how do we know that yeah i have developed the resiliency skill so it is recognition of inner strength inner strength only uh, does not only mean that you are what strengths do you have even your weaknesses matter what weakness you have you have to overcome that right so your recognition of strength and weaknesses both matter in resiliency skills you have to have the patience for improvement sometimes you are not we have, we become impatient and we don't want to improve ourselves theek hai na whatever it's whatever it is that's what i am but we have to be uh, we have to there is always scope of improvement and we have to have that in our lives and willingness to learn so obviously if we don't have the willingness or eagerness to learn something we cannot develop resiliency skills and there is no age bar in learning what we can learn what whatever happens to our life good bad we learn from it right the next is the level uh, the fifth level which is talent of serendipity which uh, you know uh, teachers uh, in life uh, the in adversity what happens we think negative right we always we are humans and we will uh, we will have negative negative thoughts first what we need to do is we need to eliminate the negative uh, thoughts and we need to have positive mind towards the situation so we have to uh, have, we have to we should uh, tell the students to have positive emotion rather than having negative emotions then character education and so uh, so uh, Uh, service learning is important for talent for the fifth level of um, resiliency now what is the idea of seven uh, seven c's uh, i'll tell you it is like building blocks okay uh, so these seven seven c's that you see on screen these are all set of building blocks which are very important to be uh, uh, which are very important for being a resilient person for example coping is very important coping control character confidence competence connection contribution all these seven are very important if you want to become a resilient person okay and now we are going to, uh, to understand each and every uh, c closely now these are the characteristic of we call asset of resilience people i think if you are not resilient you are not having some of these c's so the first one is coping how do you cope in such in situations in life you know uh, something happens in your life somebody your friend said something to you you feel bad and you become impulsive and you cannot cope with situation you act very impulsively what can be done to uh, uh, you know what can be done to prevent that so to prevent and or mitigate the vulnerabilities we have to you have to we have to regulate our emotions so activities can be done for example daily mindfulness uh, uh, screening or uh, an early intervention of ddd and ld structure at home uh, sleep pattern nutrition pattern distress tolerance post poster on the fridge a bathroom bedroom sorry uh, classroom problem solving skills focus and fact uh, and what you can change remain uh, aware of your resources so uh, in in that i think most of the teachers do daily mindfulness meditation is done by the teachers in the first period i think that is done uh, we also are aware of the children's uh, sleep pattern and nutrition uh, we post pictures in the classroom to inculcate that uh, skill in our children uh, so we do that often plus problem solving skills i think most of the english teachers would would ex would accept this that uh, we as teachers english teachers when we complete one chapter we ask the children how much uh, you know what would you do if you were in this situation so this becomes this uh, makes the child understand that oh yes if i were this i would have done that so it it makes the children more uh, responsible and it develops this problem solving skills in our children 
Now the next one is character. Character is who are you, and who and what is important to you. What things can you change? Okay, sir got sixty four. Sarita teacher sixty. Thank you so much. Or oh, you teachers are getting uh, good scores. I got less. I got. I'll be honest to you. I got fifty two in uh, this mind tool uh, game. Uh, let's come on to this character. Uh, the situation your reaction to the situation what character we are it is morally how how we teach uh, how we are morally right or wrong what we are it is one's character you can be morally right or you can be wrong right so what you are is uh, is very important in seven c's of uh, resilient people i would like to share one story um for character for for explaining this seven c's of character um uh, uh i don't know maybe you have heard the story before so there was uh, it's a very interesting story where the child is you know is he's failed and uh, he's very depressed and disappointed with the uh, with the scores so he goes to his father and says that i have not got good scores and he's very sad so he does not understand what to do he is just clueless about what to do in life so then the father he takes him to the kitchen he gives him carrot eggs and coffee beans and he asks the child to put them into containers and add some water into it and he asks uh, the child to uh, bring it to the boil, uh, boiling level so uh, ask the child to boil it so the child does not understand the child is perplexed and asks that what are you trying to explain what am i doing right now the, the the father says that you do it you will understand the result so uh, at the end uh, when uh, uh, when he had finished boiling it the father says to take out those things uh, the carrot eggs and coffee beans were taken out so obviously coffee beans were uh, uh, it vanished so he had to strain that the carrots were out and the eggs were out so now the now the father explains that how what were the you know what was the characteristics of these of these things the carrot was very strong it was very hard so when you boiled it it became softer the eggs which were delicate it became harder and the coffee beans changed the entire water so this is what a characteristics of a person is if you are strong enough to handle the situation you can change your your fate your your uh, life right now let's move on to the next c which is control uh control is autonomy like believing your ability believing in your ability and act independently to exert some control over one situation now i i remember when i was doing this i got to remember one uh, uh, meeting which i which we had with the principal sir i think sir would also remember this we had mkp meeting uh with mkp teachers and uh, we all the teachers of kashidi who teach uh, mkp students they were also a part of that and we were having the uh, top uh, you know talk of the students uh, uh, results and all of that all the stuff so he to he told about his how he gave control over the child the you know he actually shared the story of uh, what how much score uh, his child used to get in maths so he told that uh, my child used to get uh, 40 around in maths i think sir you would remember that that the child gets 40 around and uh, during the board exam uh, you told ashi that you know you have the control over your uh, uh, it's your thing it's your headache you it's your thing you see what what is uh, you know what you're doing with your life you want to get 40 marks or you want to get 100 marks i'm happy with you whatever you do in life so this is what giving control to the child the child who got control uh, over you know over her choices the child thought that yeah i have got the control over my choice so now i have to prove that yes i i can do it i have the ability to do it the child became more responsible responsible and the child uh, uh, she got 100 out of 100 in uh, board exams so this is an example this I, i think this is a perfect example of having giving the child full control over one's ability so for that we can make purposeful actions we can make realistic plans uh, or for a meaningful life based on what what is important to the child we can take uh, the steps or necessary steps to achieve the goal we can notice positive forward moving thoughts and behavior in the child and
others. Now let us move on to confidence. Confidence is one's abilities and identifying your strengths. Uh, it, it is very, very important for, for a child to be confident. I think in our school, in our, in our children, we lack confidence. I don't know the reason, but there are children who are, who has straight, uh, children who have straight fright. They don't want to come forward. In fact, today when I told them that you, you know, you have to, you are very good in this, you go to, uh, you have to do this. And the child comes to me, the teacher, I don't have the confidence. I have stage fear. I can't do this. Uh, uh, I, can you take, take any other child? So as a teacher, I have to, you know, uh, give him that confidence that you have the ability to do it. What, what will happen? It's a stage. You have to just stay, say whatever you, you have in mind. It's okay if you forget. But what you have, you are you have the ability to perform. So as a as a teacher, I should not be doing this. That okay, you don't have the confidence. Fine, it's okay. You, I'll take another child. That's not what what my job is. My job is to build confidence in our children, so that they become resilient in the end. Uh, you know, at the end of their lives. Okay, next is competence. Uh, it is the ability to mitigate emotion success and successfully problem solve. We have to focus on what we did correctly in prior successes. We also see about, see, competency is uh, what social co uh, competence is. It gives the child uh, the uh, control or confidence. This is very, uh, you know, uh, uh, interrelated. If the child has the confidence, he will obviously compete. Okay, he will, co uh, he will have a competition with himself. And these days we talk about competency-based education. So this is very important. If we want our children to be resilient, they also have to have competition. Social comp uh, competence is also very important. Uh, one also should practice saying no and asking for help. If the child does not want to ask, he is shy. We need to give them the faith that, no, if you have any problem, you can ask any child. You can ask for help. Why to be shy? Right. Next is connection. Okay, as teachers uh, or as an individual, we all have co some connections with our uh, with our friends, with our colleagues, uh, with our family members. Right, we have connections, uh, and these connections uh, are very important because resilient people. If we are resilient and uh, uh, we uh, we are uh, unhappy or we are facing some unpleasant situation, we will obviously feel connected with that person. So the children uh, should be allowed to have and express all type of emotion to at least to with whom they are connected with. Uh, we should not dis we should not encourage them to suppress unpleasant feelings. You know, at times it happens that uh, you know a boy is crying, especially in teenagers. The teachers would be, "Are you are a boy and you are crying? Well, like how can you cry? You are a boy." No, the boy also has feelings. Why one should suppress unpleasant feeling? That child, if that child is crying, let him vent out his, uh, you know, emotion. Whatever problem he has, let him let him show that. Let him express that. At least he's expressing to somebody who, with whom he's feeling connected, right? So we have to encourage uh, the children to develop close relationship with others. If a child is uh, not having friends, we should see that why you're not sitting, you're not having, you're sitting and having uh, lunch alone. Why you're not having friends? We should also intervene in that. We should see that whether they are having good friendship or not, they are having uh, that close relationship or not. These are all very important to be uh, resilient. Uh, now, the next one is contribution. Uh, I think for contribution, I would just give one example that. Uh, uh, we uh, in the school we have a counselor system. The counselors feel very confident. They have uh, because they get opportunity that they have contributed in the school. Even if uh, a teacher gives responsibility to the students that can you please uh, uh, put this? Uh, can you please clean the duster? The child who's very uh, I remember this uh, long back when uh, there was a child who was mentally uh, a little he had problem. And uh, he did not utter a single word throughout. I forgot his name right now because long back, it's a long back story. So um, I, I had never heard that child's word ever. One day, I, I just casually told him, can you please erase the blackboard for me? He understood and he did that. 
when he erased the blackboard after that he felt a little more responsible that there was pride in his faith that oh i did this it was not a very big task but volunteering in something made gave him that confidence that yeah i am worthy enough so to make the child feel that they are worthy enough they have they should be given opportunity to contribute uh, in some activities so we should communicate to children that you matter a lot and you are special not everybody is getting the same money freedom security as you get so they get uh, the you know the value of uh, you know uh, uh, contributing to the world even in simple terms if you just ask the children to clean it is your classroom why did you throw the uh, garbage here and there it is your classroom you are responsible the child will be responsible and the child will next time surely throw the garbage into the dustbin right now uh how do we build a resilience in students so it is like a chakra teachers the school environment then the teachers and the pupil we cannot build resilience in students unless we are resilient so it is all chakra the school environment uh, all the teachers plus everyone uh, in the school uh, and then teachers and then we can give it to our pupils okay now uh, i would like to share this uh, if we shape the environment we make la much larger impact than if we try to just change the children alone so we have to change the whole environment even if we want people to be resilient so uh, now we'll talk about school environment what kind of school environment is needed to create and to build resilience in, in uh, our students so uh, we need to be supportive to students no matter what they are we should we should not be so aggressively scolding the children about what you did we have to be supportive okay you did this that maybe should the child did something bad or something which is unethical we have to surely uh, scold them but we have to also be supportive to them have po positive social connection we have to tell the uh, students that you have to build positive social one should have positive uh you know uh, outward or uh, uh, view of uh, one child like uh, all the students should have positive outlook towards the person then emotional intelligence social justice high standards and expectations innovative techniques we have to use as teachers to create that environment then competency and self efficacy so that the children are strong enough to handle the adversities then decision making we need to ask the children to make clear decisions and stick to it that if you have made the decision maybe right or wrong whatever you have made the decision you are right you what you did was right it's okay if you uh, made a wrong choice but at least you had the uh, you know ability to make the choice and then we can get a healthy environment in our school now we'll uh, see what uh, activities or what we can do to uh, build resilience in our students so i uh, so first thing is very important is mind and body to take care of mind and body i think it's a very cliche dialogue and a proverb that health is wealth right health is definitely wealth not the pieces of gold and silver gold and silver do not matter what matters is your health right for that you can see this on the screen there are some pictures given uh, the first part is sleeping the uh, the child is sleeping so at least for children there should be 8 or 7 uh, to 7 and a half hours of sleep is very important then kids he eating healthy plate uh, so i thought uh, to share this uh, uh, because it's a very uh, good platform where i can share this idea to have to ensure that our children are having a uh, good and you know healthy diet every day we can ensure um, by having an activity like uh, not activity by setting a rule uh, that monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday all these five days the children are getting a fixed uh, a diet uh, getting a fixed food like on monday the child gets it is not feasible in all the classes but at least it is feasible in lkg and ukg or 1 2 3 in lkg and ukg we can have a uh, uh, fruit break so that the children are also adding fruits in their uh, in their diet plus leafy vegetables a lot of students are not uh, they don't like vegetable especially from kg to 3 i don't think they like it at all so if you agree to it teachers you can just type yes in the chat box that if you agree with this that this can be done in lkg to 3 
uh, uh, they'll be a great help. Uh, then the next thing is yoga, which you see on the screen, dance. And these are all exercises which are uh, uh, very important to become fit and fine. And then there is a smile, smile emoticon, which you can see. If you are mentally and physically fit, you will obviously smile like this. Now, the next is connection, family, colleague, friends, personal learning network. All these matter in uh, uh, developing resilience. Uh, family is important because the child uh, will definitely uh, go to some of the family members. Maybe if the child is very scared with the, with the mother, he will definitely go to the father. So in family, we should, uh, as a parent, I'm saying that we should have an environment where the children are free, where the child is free uh, to uh, come and talk about their problems. Colleagues, in colleagues also in workplace, if we have any problem, we should we can share it with our colleagues. Friends, we do that often, I think. And personal let, uh, learning network. So we make our personal learning network where there are few with whom we uh, we try to learn new things. So with them also we can uh, have the discussions or any problem we can share. Uh, then is be prepared to manage failure. Uh, how we how we can do that? How we can do that? Uh, you know we say that we become failure. And we become disheartened that, oh, I failed. But I think when you fail, you are you are learning from your mistakes. Uh, you know, uh, it, it this always happens uh, with uh, most of us that we fail and we get disheartened and we say that I'm not going to do this again. But we have to, as a teacher or as an individual, we have to face uncomfortable situations. And we have to be uh, we have to be resilient enough that this happened to me, but it's okay. I will face it. Then write down what you are afraid of. Whatever you are afraid of, you you can write uh, write down anywhere. We can have this diary writing system. Uh, we you can write it as a child. We uh, we tell the children to main, uh, to maintain diary. They can write it. I uh, you also must have remembered that during. Uh, uh, all those who were involved in this activity, uh, happiness curriculum, we all used to do this. Uh, children used to write it on the wall uh, of what they're afraid of, the gratitude, all that they used to write. Break down a big challenge into pieces. Like in math, we can, you, you can also teach life challenges and interlink it with the uh, with our subject, like maths teacher, they can, uh, maths teachers can tell that, okay, it's a very big problem. You have to do this. You know, first part is this, second part is this, third part is this. So like this, the children will understand that, oh, this could be done. Half of things could be done. In life also, they have, they can also, you know, life, they have to, ultimately the children have to face life. So big challenges will definitely come in their life. It is on their way. So we have to relate it with the uh, with the problems or uh, with the subjects that we are teaching in class. We'll not get extra time to teach them uh, separately, right? So why while, while teaching only, we have to relate all these with the with the students. Become comfortable and with uh, be, become comfortable with rejections. So I remind of uh, one uh, thing when we were having a story uh, telling competition. There was a child who got rejected, and she could not. Uh, she did not. Uh, you know, she did not get any prize for that. So she literally cried for one hour. She she cried a lot. Now, as a teacher, we cannot say that how much will you cry? We should not be saying that. Rather, we should say that it's okay. You cry, you cry. Right. But you have to face this in future. Also, there would be rejections. It is just a part of life. And even if the, ch the, the child was in standard four, even if the child is in three, the child needs to understand, okay, rejections are part of life. It will come. But what is problem now? What is the most problematic thing is that if we, if we accept it and we do nothing for rejections, if, oh, I got rejected, it's fine. I got rejected. I'll do something else. No, that is not what resilience teach, uh, teach us. It teaches us that, okay, you got rejected. It's okay. You try again. Right. So we need to tell the child that, okay, you got rejected. Now, next time you again perform and next time you be better. And uh, the child will definitely will learn how to do and will one day will definitely be successful in life. Then learn new things. 
uh, we as teachers as an individual or as a uh, you know as uh, the skill to add in uh, uh, students life because we teachers are shaping the future of the youth so we have to teach the ch uh, children that you have to learn new things always no matter and tell the uh, students that as a uh, as an adult also i learn new things right now the next is create positive thinking habit okay uh, the uh, we always have negative thoughts uh, isn't it uh, we get negative thoughts first how many of you get negative thoughts first when when whenever something bad happens and you get negative thoughts just answer yes or no uh, I, because i get it uh, something bad happens to me that then i would say oh, i did something wrong i am not this and that and you know uh, teachers yes most of the teachers would agree with me that we get negative thoughts first right so if we get we are getting one negative thought what we need to do is we need to build uh, to uh, get more uh, you know positive three positive thoughts so one negative thought is equal to three positive thoughts if you're thinking one negative you have to find out three positive thoughts right then to uh, create awareness in children how to build up positive thinking we can ask them to uh, use gratitude walls which was done in uh, happiness curriculum they can make gratitude tree they can make uh, uh, thank you cards um, or an act of kindness like saying something thank you in you know in the public anything can be an act of kindness and then having a positive view and confidence for others and passion so these all will create thinking uh, positive thinking habits in children i remember uh, when we used to do a uh, cur happiness curriculum teach uh, children used to make the gratitude walls and they used to write uh, they used to express their gratitude to their parents to their friends to the teachers and they were really very positive while you know doing it they used to enjoy that uh, uh, next is perform as a winner we need to perform as a winner so no matter you're winning or losing doesn't matter what matters is you're performing as a winner so you see the last person who's uh, running is still smiling all the three kids here are smiling they're not uh, you know uh, they're not frowning they they're all smiling because they're giving their best so what matters is you're giving your best right next is flexible but firmly roots we our root should be firm but we can be flexible okay uh, if you want to be res resilient you also be f uh, flexible at times right but your roots should be firm if your if your uh, if your morals if you th th think about your moral values you have to be firm with that okay now the next one is keep learning learning has no age bar learning is life i feel and you learn from your past mistakes and you then rectify it and learn it learning is not given only in the books it is not given we learn it through our mistakes specially okay um next thing is active learning now how can we ask the children to actively be uh, act to you know develop this active learning is tell them that you have to grab the opportunities you have to be competent enough explore real challenges see relevance of their study be valued members of the community make real contribution to the team usefulness understand strengths and weaknesses and learn from your weaknesses as i told that you know uh, learning Uh, you have to not only see the strengths but also the weaknesses because if we don't do not come out of your of our weaknesses or fear we cannot be resilient at all right so for uh, actively learning throughout our lives we have to be competent even as teachers we have to have a healthy competitions and in class also uh, teachers we have to tell the children sometimes they become very uh, you know very serious and they are like uh, very serious and competitive but we need to tell the children that you have to be competent and there should be healthy competition right not unhealthy competition you have to be friendly with others but have some competition level uh, we have to give them real ch uh, challenges and uh, we have to tell them that you are valued so their worth we have to tell them right 
Now the next, uh, there are some more uh, things which we can develop in our children is supportive and caring relationship. As teachers and uh, uh, students relation, uh, I think we have to be supportive and caring, Have uh, to uh, we have to build caring relationship. Uh, uh, families, what the families do, I don't know, but uh, as a teacher and a student, we have to build supportive and caring relationship. Tolerance is very important for teachers because sometimes you also get irritated that okay we uh, we, are, we become impatient, but we have to develop this in ourselves first so that we can give it to our children. So we have to be uh, we have to have the tolerance level. We have to have tolerance. Then healthy environment is very important in classroom. If we if we if the students fear us, they will never come to us and ask and get, uh, share their problems to us there are there are teach uh, there are students who come up and say their even their house problems that this happened in my house and i'm so upset there are students who do that it is because the teacher created a healthy environment in the classroom that is very important for uh, for uh, for, uh, for us then positive mindset is important for uh, students to develop um, and teachers as well. Uh, we have to have positive mindset and we should tell the uh, students that you also need to develop positive mindset, right? Especially in primary that uh, I've seen that many times students are negative and they complain, they nag. But as teachers, we have to tell them, oh, he's your friend. You know, uh, if two uh, friends are fighting, one should not be like just quitting this. I think we, we should take this as a challenge and we should uh, mitigate that, right? One should experience failure. Failure is a part of life, as I said. Then high expectations, opportunity for meaningful contribution. So we need to give the children opportunity so that they are contributing to the school and to the environment. At the end, they'll become resilient. So here it is an overview activities to develop resilience. Um, uh, for example, enhance relationship with social support, see crisis and or stressful event challenges or opportunities, practice radical acceptance. Ac acceptance is very important. One has to accept their failures. We sometimes deny it, but one has to accept it. Then re uh, develop realistic goals and move towards it, uh, towards them. So one has to develop realistic goals. If I cannot climb Mount Everest, I should not be making this unrealistic goals that, oh, I can do it and I'm resilient. No, I, if I am, if I think that it's feasible for me, it's okay. But if it's not, uh, then I should not be making such goals. Take decisive actions in adverse situation. And we have to prepare our children that you have to have the decision of your life. You have to take decisions of your life, even in adverse situation. So if there is something happening in the classroom, there is an adverse situation, maybe not an adverse, like not uh, a difficult situation uh, in the classroom. We have to uh, give the responsibility to the child that you decide so that the children become more decisive. Their actions are more decisive. Look for opportunity or self of self-discovery after a struggle. Develop self-confidence. Then keep a long-term perspective, considering the event in the scheme maintaining a hopeful outlook so we have to develop a hopeful outlook that okay fine something some uh, something is uh, good in our life we have to be that hopeful we can't be hopeless and we should one should not be hopeless i think we also sometimes get hopeless oh this child will not will never be you know this is a hopeless child this child will never do anything in life this these kind of statements now one should not say that you are a hopeless child nothing will work no, as a teacher, we should never do that. We have to be hopeful. So to have to, you know, to maintain hopeful outlook, we have to have that outlook first, that you have to be hopeful, right? Then care for one's mind, body, mindfulness, vulnerability pre preventions, all these are a part of it. Uh, eliminate uh, drains on energy reserves. So we have to stay inflated. Mm, okay, now this I found very interesting. Uh, now steps to hap happiness when life sucks. What, what, what are the steps that when, you know, life sucks, what can be done? We have to support others. When we see that there's some, that somebody is uh, struggling in life, we have to support them. Take stress break, take 
holidays they go for a vacation to uh, you know take stress break uh, then remember your comeback so you have to remember that you had some setbacks and you have to come back revert back to your pre crisis times identify your strengths identify your resources take care of yourself physically physically as well as mentally or even emotionally take care of yourself radical acceptance and new beginning growth so uh, we have as i said before acceptance is also very important we need to accept our failures and we have to again have new beginnings uh, view adversity as an opportunity then practice optimism focus on small positive changes we have to have the uh, you know have a positive outlook towards life so these are the steps to happiness when life sucks now this uh, is, this i found was very interesting that world is a great mirror the love and joy behind your teaching is perhaps the strongest impression you will leave with your students so the students are our mirrors so the love and joy we are giving to the uh, to the children will be uh, given to us so yeah. uh, at last i would also share one uh, video with you i'm sharing a tab which will make you understand about resilience <laughs> i think uh, everybody has understood that uh, we as teachers need to explain them what resiliency is and we need to uh, prepare our children uh, to prepare themselves to face the adversities of life and uh, be resilient so thank you so much teachers i hope it was a fruitful session thank you so much Okay, thank you, ma'am. It was very excellent session. We learned so many things about this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very well done, Nanjita. Very well done. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, sir. I I can see that transformation and change. I am feeling so proud of you. Thank very you, well done. Very well explained resilience, and you stuck to the point and you came back again and again about how to teach the students about being resilient. and it's i think that's one of the most important uh, characteristic that we need to build in the child in present times they have right. to be resilient they have to come back again and again so wonderfully done i am very very proud of you 
Thank very you, happy sir. with you. Well done. Well done. Well done. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone.